My name is Gopi Rebala. I'm CTO of OpsMX. My colleague, Ashmita, uh, she's in India. She is not able to come today with some visa issues. But I do have a recording of her video of her part. We'll play that. Uh, today, we're going to talk about using CD events for application security posture management. Uh, it's so in case you're not familiar with application security posture, that's a new term introduced by Gartner that represent end-to-end -end security visibility. Uh, we'll go through a little bit more detail on what it means and uh, what are the challenges uh, faced for that in the enterprise. And, and then we'll see how the CD events and cloud events help the process and uh, give us a much better leg up in trying to get that posture end-to-end. And we'll go into some of the details of how we did the implementation with those. Um, so the, what is application security posture management? So the way it's defined is end-to-end -end view of the application that's running in your target environment. So this includes from code, your SAS scans, or DAST scans, or, or vulnerabilities of your binaries or even the process, the entire collection of visibility into what you are doing uh, in terms of security and where exceptions were taken for those uh, providing that ability. Where were we? We were at the what is application security and why is it useful? Right? So if we can do that for one application, in an organization you have n number of teams, and multiple groups, and for the central security team, to have the visibility on where their real problems are, are most of the issues are coming from how to uh, quickly attack those uh, problems, you need to have total visibility also. So that's uh, kind of what we will get with the general security visibility. And now that we have the idea on what the security posture of each one of these applications, individual services are, you also can provide automated compliance reports for them. Right? Because you're already collecting all the data, you know exactly what the status is, you provide that compliance capability. And we always talk about shift left closer to where the problem is found to resolve that. And so now you can use this structure to provide problems resolved at the code scanning or checking into the code, into the Git repository, or when you're building the binaries uh, in the CI system, pulling in uh, third party libraries and checking the vulnerabilities in the third party and identify, try to resolve right at that place. And this, by having visibility into what is currently running here in your production, any new incident that happens, say, uh, XZ that came up, let's say, is that library version used in any of your production systems? It's very easy to track back, right? So what is the challenge in uh, today with this? Uh, application security, one, if you want to get that view, what is the challenge, right? So most of the organizations today have variety of siloed tools. So each of these dev groups are using certain tools which they like, uh, and getting the data to centralize it, having a view of what is the security posture for the uh, output of these tools that developers are using is very hard. And the tool chain itself is complex. There are many deployment tools, different environments that they are deploying to. And having identifying a threat, let's say, for the evolving threats. Now, you want to know which other teams are affected, or what are all the applications that we should apply the same resolutions to. That's very challenging today. Uh, and the complexity of automation, of course, by having so many different teams, using different tools and large number of tool sets in the DevOps tool chains, you get this complexity of automation and trying to collate all that information in one place. Right? So to just give you, a, this picture generally gives a very good idea on, aha, this is what all the issues are in the security uh, life cycle that you want to collect right? from all the way from developer pulling in some code from third parties or pulling in libraries from open source, building and pushing the artifacts or using the artifacts from the third party or open source, deploying them and running in an environment with a certain security posture in them. So putting it all together brings you the application security posture. Right? So the way we think about getting all the data in 
and looking at uh, that information is through this. That's we, each of these steps, each of these tools are generating the data. We were calling them DevOps integrations. Uh, essentially, you go and connect with Jenkins, you go and connect with SaaS tools, you go and connect with Spinnaker, uh, get the data from them, either in the events, in some cases you have to go pull them, and put them on a, into um, lifecycle visibility structure. So some of the tools you can see are, uh, you know, there's a large number of these tools. So if, if it all goes into a SDLC database, here we are using the, a graph database. Uh, based on the incoming data, we also have some correlation to allow us to say, hey, this is the artifact that is being built, move to the next stage, and that matches with the artifact built in the next one. So once we have the data, now we can apply the security policies. At each of the stages, uh, there may be enterprise policies or best practices that we know that we can apply. As and when a new issue is found, based on the policy, we can alert and say, uh, you should go and resolve this. Right? So that's kind of what we call continuous posture. And at the time of the deploy, you can then say uh, whether the particular artifact or application services can be deployed or not based on uh, the data that's collected. We are calling that entire data as a delivery bill of materials. So at the time of the deploy, now we have a collection of all the information that says this was the security posture, this is the artifact, set of artifacts that moved through the process, and that you can use for com uh, compliance. Now, the issue here is that in the DevOps integrations, depending on the number of tools and the data for each one of them, there is a, a different integration that you need. Uh, so that's when we looked at uh, CD events. It, it, it has the right structure, which says uh, for interoperable, we don't necessarily have to go and look at every individual tool. Uh, based on the structure of the data, we can then uh, parse the data and store it without having to have specific implementation for the data store for each of those tools. Um, so there are some issues. So we will go through the details on uh, how that was done. And uh, we had to use, it's not just CD events. We also use cloud events in some cases where uh, CD events doesn't exist. And uh, we use the adopter pattern. So let me just play the video of my colleague. of secure software delivery pipelines and objects. Let's first understand what CD events offer us. CD events offer standardization of events generated by different tools which are part of delivery pipelines. There can be a large number of different combinations of built and deployed platforms which are used to make releases happen. And those all generate events, but a very different variety of events. CD events solve the issues of interoperability by offering a template for all events. CD events are implementation of cloud events and add a lot of metadata, which can be used to thoroughly investigate security aspects of the tools and artifacts. As shown in the slide in front of us, CD events are standardized events, which make it easy to consume and process a variety of operations happening on different layers of the pipeline. CD events offer a lot of metadata, which gives us context of what's happening. CD events are vendor neutral, which makes integrations amongst the tools even easier. Here we see a simple example of how CD events can be incorporated into delivery pipeline. Here we see an event broker, which is meant to be the receiver of events. First, the developer raises a merge request, which generates a source code change event. This can be the trigger for numerous checks over the source code and the best practices being followed. The results of this verification can be a go-ahead signal for triggering the build process. Once the build process is started and then finished, these build events are published to the broker. In parallel, the artifact is published to the artifact repository. Once the artifact is placed in the repository, artifact scans can be triggered to generate vulnerability assessment reports and S-bombs and check artifact integrity. The results of these reports can be used to allow or deny a deployment once approved the artifact is deployed. 
Once deployment initiates and completes the environment discovery and deployment discovery events are raised and pre and post deployment stakes are evaluated. Now let's see how some common security breaches are propagated from one stage of the pipeline to another and how those could be mitigated with the help of CD events. In this scenario, the developer has introduced some logs to the code base where some sensitive information has been exposed. The repository does not have required code branch protection policies to avoid unreviewed code merges as well. The code is then built and artifact generated is pushed to the artifact repository. Once deployed, the container runtime logs are problematic and may fail security assessment and make the system compromised. Now what could be done to avoid the situation? Controls could be implemented between source and build stages like check if the code reviews are mandatory in repository settings and the change proposed has been reviewed or not. We could also run static code analysis to find code level bugs and vulnerabilities. We could also perform secret scanning of code before the build happens. Next, we could also apply controls for runtime analysis like dash scans, secret scans of runtime environments for log analysis. Let's take a look at how CD events facilitate these checks. The event shown here is a code push event into the GitHub repository that has been mentioned in the source and branches available in subject. Though it is not a CD event, that is because of some limitations posed by CD events, like the limited support of platforms and the need to add a lot of custom data to make, meet data requirements. We are using cloud events for some tools to implement its adapters and perform internal mapping with CD event spec for event processing. The suggested control here is the repository and main branch should be protected from force pushes and unreviewed code merges. Next, the state of the branch before and after the change is available. The controls to be imposed here are run open assistive scans to verify if best practices are followed. Run SAS scans using integrators like SonarCube and SEMGRAM. We could also run secret scans to check if any secrets has been exposed in the code. Next, the user who is trying to push the code. The controls that might use this information are who is the contributor, is the contributor part of the organization or is an outside collaborator. Next, there is some information available about the comments associated with the PR. Is the change approved by the approved reviewers or not? Though there is a long list of checks that could be placed using this information and by extending this information, this gives us a fair idea about how source code change events help security analysis. Now let's take a look at the events at the next stage of the pipeline that is continuous integration or build stage. The event shown here will be a CD event which is not requiring the mappings between cloud events and CD event spec for processing of event data. Here we have build or pipeline run queued and started events and then build or pipeline run finished events. Also we have artifact published events but we are not consuming that at the moment. Shortly we will understand why. The events shown here is a job finish event which also carries the details about the job that has been executed. We can verify the configuration of the job to find any security concerns. For example, secret directly configured in the job and not fresh fetched from some secure vault. Or it could be console logs publishing way too much information. Next, we have values of runtime parameters passed at the time of triggers. The trigger type and values can help us replicate issues which are faced in executions for debugging. Next, we have the details about the produced artifact in the form of name, label, and the SHA of the artifact produced. This information is later used at next steps of the pipeline to verify the integrity of the artifact at the time of publishing it or deploying it. Next available is the source repository information, which can be used to verify the authenticity of the trigger. Next available is URL of build server and job which can help us verify if it's an authorized build server which can be used to produce deliverable artifacts. So one thing to point out here is that in the CD, we, for the Jenkins, we have this plugin that we adopted that actually generates CD events. In the previous example of the SCM with the GitHub, GitHub itself doesn't generate the CD events. Uh, so we have this adopter that receives the events and converts that into cloud events. So we are, we are using this combination of both CD events and cloud events. Uh, but now, I think we are looking at a way to have one set to use them and have the data, par part of the data you know, in a standard form. One of the, still we still have the advantage of having uh, the receiving in one set of say cloud events or CD events and internally we have representation we can then use it for different sources. Right. Also we 
have the user who triggered the bill to check if the user is authorized to make the releases happen or not. We don't use the artifact published event at the build stage as the required artifact information has already been discovered as part of the build finish event itself. This is an example of extending the template to suit the purpose of the integration. In this slide, we discuss another scenario where a security issue is propagated to multiple layers of the pipeline. Here the build is generated without any signatures or SHA is not being stored. The build is published to the artifact repository but a breach happens and the origin Replaced by a fraudulent artifact and the same replaced artifact is delivered to the environment. The compromised artifact can cause security issues like data breach etc. Now let's see what could have been done better to avoid the situation. The artifact could have been signed and the signing authorities could have been integrated to ensure trust verification and the same signature could be verified at the runtime environments to check integrity of the artifact delivered. Similar to previous stages, the artifact repositories also publish events upon artifact publish and downloads. Some suggested practices here can be integration with the testation tools like Intoto to ensure provenance of artifact between build and artifact stage. In the shown event, we have the SHA of the artifact pushed, which can be verified against the details which we had stored back in the build stage. Some artifact repositories support inbuilt scanning features for vulnerability detection upon which scan start and scan finish events are generated. The event shown here represents one such scan report. For the platforms where scanning is not integrated, the artifact can be pulled and later scanned using integrators like Trivi, Gripes, Sneak, etc. Have we look at the continuous deployment events now. First, environment is discovered and updated, which could be the trigger for IAC scans. We could use integrations like Trivi, Sneak and some more tools to perform scans based on Terraform events, etc. Next, the environment configured can be verified to check against CIS and NIST benchmarks in best practices. We can also trigger penetration tests upon deployment events using integrators like Burpsuit. The integ we integrate with deployment events from Spinnaker, Argo events, Tekton, and Flux to initiate artifact integrity checks and deployment configuration checks. Also, the artifact that reaches the stage of deployment must have passed through a verified source, build, and artifact stage, which ensures trust. Spinnaker currently does not support exporting CD events. We use adapter patterns using eco events to convert them into CD events and use them in the event chain. Let's summarize. So uh, with the Spinnaker, we just found out that there is a new uh, PR that supports the CD events now. We will take a look at that. Uh, Spinnaker is one of the core tools that we use for continuous delivery. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> uh, that's kind of what we are uh, mostly focused on right now. So what, what, we were looking at some of the tools. We were looking at the tools that support the uh, CD events and cloud events. Uh, we currently are working with Jenkins, Spinnaker, uh, Tekton, Harbor, Argo, Flux, and uh, on the cl cloud event side, we already saw KubeWatch. And, so actually, Harbor doesn't support CD events. It's a cloud event. But you can see some of the tools we are able to integrate uh, with our system to provide this end-to-end uh, -end security in a given enterprise. Right. So uh, to conclude, uh, based on our experience with this, um, we do see a lot of value with the cloud events and uh, CD events in the type of application that we are trying to build. And CD events is also focused on orchestration pattern, right? with the events that are coming in, being able to orchestrate different tools. We are primarily using it as a observable system, uh, events coming from different systems more as a notifications. At some point, we would probably want to use it as orchestration using the security checks saying you can go forward or not. Uh, as we can see, the number of tools that are still supporting this are small. The adopter pattern works well. 
Uh, but we again, that becomes like you have to build one for each one of the integrations. But if we provide this as a community support, open source those, maybe that's one way for us to get a bigger uh, adoption, or critical mass for uh, you know, uh, CD events. Um, today, what we are seeing is with the data that we need for the security checks, there are two parts, right? One is the data that comes within the event. The other one is you may have to reach out to get additional data. Like you have some metadata that comes in the event itself, but for us to make uh, correlations or do get the additional information, we have to reach back to the service itself and get the data. So th there needs to be a uh, a common way of doing that part as well. Uh, so overall, we are starting to see uh, the usefulness of this adoption of the system and look, probably work with uh, Tolly to see how we can go faster on this one. Uh, thank you. I notice it. Oh, sorry. The question one more time. Uh, the I want to know what the difference is between what you think of a delivery build of materials is versus like some of these CD events. I mean, CD events are just a point events at different stages. Uh, for example, scan completed is an event, or deploy started is an event, um, job started and a build is an event. So they are putting this all together to form a comprehensive story to say these are the steps that happen for this application to get deployed, and this is the status at that point, at point in time. That's the delivery bill of material for us. Nice, and one more question. Uh, I noticed that you had a container digest whenever you're deploying, like you know, you're, you're saying that there's a container tag and there's a digest as well when you're doing the deployment. That particular digest, is that pointing to a manifest list or is it going to be the actual manifest of like the particular architecture that you're deploying to? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so that in in this case, that's map pointing to manifest, right? So the individual so manifest, like yeah, the architecture, yeah. OS and architecture. So for example, okay, it's deploying a Helm charts and Spinnaker as a stage. So for that deploy stage, we are looking at the manifest of the Helm that it's picking up. Uh, within that Helm chart, the deployment it can include multiple containers that it is deploying, and each one of these containers needs to have some kind of attestation and verification that needs to happen. So those builds and the structure for them is all stored when they are built and pushed into the repository. So when we, at that point, we have to reach out and say, what are all the images that are being deployed with that Helm, and do the verification for all of them. Got it. So there, there are. Uh, yeah, there is some fuzziness uh, still in some of these events, the way we are using them. So, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, thanks.